Look at a mailbag. If you want to see what I've been buying recently, watch the video. Hang around. So this is annoying. I've recorded a whole bunch of footage. I got about three quarters of the way through the mailbag and realised my microphone wasn't turned on because I have to turn the thing on because it's got the switch on it. That was annoying. Anyway, so some of these packages already opens up. I'm going to have to kind of pretend of a couple of things I haven't looked at yet. So we'll start again. <sighs> annoying. Really annoying. Okay, so this one here. This is what I think are some fuses, little service mount fuses. I think they might be 0402s. I'm not quite sure. It says 0402 on there, but I'm not quite sure. I think maybe, maybe that's 2 amp. Can you see it? Maybe. Maybe you can. So, yeah, we'll chuck it on the bench and we'll have a look at them up. Okay, so here's the little package of 0402 parts with these are, which I think are 2 amp fuses. These would be MacBook parts. Pretty sure that's what's in there. Not much to see there, really. But anyway, I wanted to show you on the bench so you can see how small they are. Well, they're 0 isn't they? You know. Okay, next thing. Oh, see, I've already opened this using my RAM knife. Still annoyed I didn't have the audio going, that's done. It's not the first time either. I've done it a few times now. So this is just some USB mini, oh, sorry, USB micro cables. There's a shortish one there. Got a couple of longer ones uh, with the braided outer sleeving on them. And another one which is a bit longer, also braided outer sleeve. I've realized I don't actually have any left. The kids have used them all and stuff, so I've basically run out. So I thought I'd better get some more before I actually need another one. All right, so these are these USB micro cables. So this is a really short one there. It's probably 50 centimeters long, is it? A 30 centimeter cable. Nothing that exciting there. Nice little short one. What's this one here? So 1.8 meter. Nice braided cable. These appear to be one meter, are they? Doesn't say. Um, they're probably one, I'd say they're probably one meter cables. So two of those, also braided. I mean, these look like nice quality cables. You've got a metal sheath on there and stuff like you know, metal housing and enemy housing of some kind. Look all nice enough, don't they? So, yeah, sometimes you just need these things, so, you know, just have them around for when you need the time. There's nothing like needing one and not having one. Good quality cables. I'll be links down below and stuff like this as always. Alright, next thing. Ah, right, okay. Ah. This is um, this is from Lewis Rossman. Well, obviously not Lewis Rossman directly, but from his company in New York. Bit of a story around this. These are obviously some MacBook parts, I'll kind of tell you what those are in a second. I purchased this on the 29th of December. It got sent, as in shipped, left New York on a 2nd of January. So Lewis Osman's company was really quick in shipping him, even though it's Christmas holiday period, stuff like that. So I was actually surprised by how quick it was. Now, it's now the 27th of February, and they only just arrived yesterday. So they arrived on the 26th of February. So basically it took two months to get from New York on a plane to New Zealand. I'm not quite sure what that plane was doing in that two months, but it wasn't coming here. It's sent by USPS, so I think they lost it, obviously. And then finally it turned up again, but that's just ridiculous. Two months, not good enough. But obviously it's not Lewis Rossman's fault, it's the buddy shipping company. But hey, at least they got in. So what I've actually purchased here is a ISL 6259. 10 of those, and um, some PM6640, obviously these are MacBook parts. Now I did buy some stuff from uh, AliExpress previously, but some of it turned out to be fakes, as happens. So um, unfortunately, I couldn't trust those parts. So I thought, well, I'll get some proper ones. I mean, I don't do a lot of MacBook stuff, so this will probably do me just fine. It's not many parts, but it should be fine. So at least I've got some now. Um, yeah, not great. So these are the parts I got from 
the Vossman Repair Group. So these are the um, ISL 6059. So you can see it's AHRTZ. And those are the parts right there. I'm just going to focus a bit lower down the bench because I'm, I've got a focusing down here. So there you go. Got manual focus set up. Which can be a pain if I'm trying to do stuff at close range like this. But anyway, if you don't care about that. So that's those. And um, these are the PM 6640s. Ten of those as well, I think. Yeah, ten of those, and these are these parts, even smaller. So these are all like power control stuff. So another thing which I've already opened because of the the microphone issue. A little surprise. Oh look! No. Yeah. So I've got some feet, rubber feet here, and some harder ones here. I don't know quite sure what these are. Some kind of polymer, some kind of, I don't know, probably PVC actually. Anyway, these are little dot feet, self-adhesive, and these are square feet, rubber, um, also self-adhesive. I'll show you these on the bench anyway. But I needed these, the rubber ones for my spectrum analyzer, my uh, audio control SA3050, which had the feet missing from the back, so you couldn't stand it on this back end because um, it's got the, the connectors and stuff on the back sticking out. So these might be big enough, and they're smaller than I thought they were going to be. I might have ordered some other ones as well, I can't remember. Um, I think I probably did order more than one size actually. So these are probably for that anyway. Okay, so these are these feet. So let's look at the rubber ones first. I want to measure these. I've already got my digital caliper out. Digital vent vernier, when we call it. So let's just have a look first. Let's just look at the height, because that's usually the most important thing. Six mil. Okay. And they are 12 mil square, it looks like. Yep, 12 mil square. So we'll see if that is big enough for my SSA. They may or may not be. Let's say self adhesive, supposedly 3M. Looks alright. How many of those are there? 40 of those. Let's look at this one here. Partially stuff to the bag. rubbery, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what these are made from. Anyway, those would be thermoplastic rubber. These might be too. Might be, anyway. So these are, let's try and get the corner one up easier. So there's a, about, say, 8 mil round. Height is going to be about, I'll have to try and do it on the flat there actually. Yeah, it's about 2.5 mil because you have to lay the thickness of the backing and stuff like that. So about 2.5 mil high as well. So these are good for little projects, you know, little project boxes and stuff like that. Um, very handy for that kind of thing. And so I've got these for my SSA. Um, I think they're, I think they're big enough. So I've got my SSA just here, and um, I thought I'd just quickly just eye it up. So that part there looks just okay. Now the thing that sticks up the most is that button there. It's actually not tall enough. It's not quite tall enough. Anyway, I measured it with my vernier as well, and the button sticks out six and a half mil. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to get some other ones. I think I did buy more than one type anyway. This may not be the ones I actually bought for this. I might have just bought these at the same time. Um, I'm pretty sure I did buy some bigger ones like the ones already on here because you can see the, the size comparison there is a bit of a difference. So, I'm pretty sure I bought some that kind of size too. Hi, right, next thing. Let's see what this is. Ah, right, bit of a giveaway. This may seem a little bit familiar to some of you, if you can see that with the lighting reflecting on it. Oh, there we go, now I've broken it. Two? I don't buying two. Oh, maybe I did, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is a basically a clock kit. Now I purchased one of these previously. You can see it there, hopefully. The issue was the shaft and it was actually too short. This is to replace one of my wife's. She has a clock for years, since before I met her. And the clock failed on it. And I did buy one of these previously, but the shaft was about 5mm shorter. 
it wasn't quite long enough. I managed to find these other ones that I don't have the right hands on them, different styling. But um, I'll show you on the bench in a minute anyway. These should do the job. I don't know, I've got two. Sure. Maybe I, I don't know, I'll buy two. I need one. Uh, it's a mystery. I, I really don't know. Okay, so here's the clocks. Now, so I'm still puzzled about why I've got two. I'm pretty sure I would have only bought one. I don't know, it's a bit odd. I, maybe it's two different hand styles, maybe that's what it was. No, they're both the same. I, I don't know, I'm confused by that. Anyway, so just standard clock mechanism, nothing that exciting about that. So it's just a longer shaft. I think these were 20, I think these are 22 mil or something like that. I think, something like that. There'll be links down below for these anyway if you're interested in these things. These are pretty cheap things, not that expensive to get. But basically, you have a, they work by having these collars. So you've got two collars, which hands go onto, and then in the centre there, there's a pin, which the second hand goes onto. So you've got, um, I think it's, it's going to be hours, minutes, and then seconds in that, in that sequence there. So I just push over, just slide onto those, and that's it. So if you ever want to make a clock, you know, if you want to do some kind of custom thing, you can make a nice front for it and make it all look all nice and and whatever style you want. And, um, you know, maybe you want to do cartoon or something, I don't know. Maybe kids want to use it for projects. But you can make a little clock. It's pretty easy. So, yeah. Again, the links for these down below. At least now I can fix my wife's clock, so I should be happy. Always got to keep your wife happy. Just ask her. Okay, last thing. Biggest box for last. Even a nice big box. Well, maybe that not a big box. Anyway. Okay. So these weren't packaged very well. We got this stuff on the top. This is from a local business, uh, PB Tech. So you got all that on the top. And we've got two drives sitting on the box, and this is this box is rattling around. So they haven't actually done a very good job of packing these. They should be like bubble wrapped, you know. This just—I'm not impressed by that. You know, this this doesn't work unless you wrap it completely in it. Just putting some on top doesn't protect the bottom of the box. Ugh. Anyway, ranting, packaging. Uh, so we've got some software for them. Whatever. Now these are. Some LG DVD drives, or DVD writers, fairly new as well, October last year manufacturer. So um, I've got a, my Mac Pro over there has got dual DVD drives. The one's actually, the top one's actually a Blu ray disc, Blu ray writer, and the bottom one is a DVD, and that one's playing up. Um, I think it's actually, yeah, it's quite old that one. I think it's an older version of this particular drive, so I'm going to replace in that drive one of these. I'll probably do a video on it, actually, you want to swap it out. What do you reckon? So it's a plan? I think so. So, make sure you share the video if anyone's interested in this sort of stuff too. Okay, so these are these LG DVD drives. DVD writers. In disc, apparently. It's a G... H24NSD1. You can probably see it in camera anyway if it focuses on it. Fairly cheap. This is like, how can I say, these things are like 30 bucks New Zealand now. $30 for a DVD writer. It's just incredible. So the prices come down a lot. I mean, when I was, last time I bought one of these, it was like $100. So it's incredible. But then I don't know what the longevity is like. There was basically a choice of one. I think, no, there was an Asus one as well, actually. There was Asus, but that was sort of $50 I think it was, so this is like the cheapest DVD writer I could find, to be honest. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll do a video on this and I'll replace my Mac Pro one, it won't be a very big video, it's pretty easy to replace the drives in that, but I'll do a video showing how to do it. And um, I'll replace the drive that's in there, which is faulty, and put one of these in. So I've got one, I don't actually need one right now, so the other one's a spare, so I thought, well, it's going to go over again eventually, they always do, they always fail eventually. So, I've got another one. So this can sit in my parts, spare parts bin, and um, when the time comes I can drop this in. It might, it might not be, my computer might be in somebody else's computer, but 
At least I'll have one because who knows how long it's going to be before you can't get these things anymore because discs are sort of going out, aren't they? They're gradually being phased out a little bit. They're not as popular as they used to be. Uh, get them while you can, I suppose. So thanks a lot to my Patreon supporters who help to support my channel. I've only got a small number of Patreons, so if you're interested in helping to support the channel and um, helping to buy more items or mailbag or, or whatever I have to be working on, then please check out the links below for the Patreons. And I really appreciate the support. So thank you very much to those people. You'll see credits at the end of the video showing who's currently supporting me. If you want to share the video, please do. Social media, you know, Twitter, wherever you want to put it, Facebook, please do. Some people might be interested in these things. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Click on the bell icon as you probably sort of graphic whizzing around somewhere. Probably whizz it around over here. Right, no, there. Um, yeah, just follow that graphic and do what it says. And I, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. So anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. See you next time. Oh, that's not forgetting. Put comments down below. I like to hear feedback and, and comments and have conversations with people on, in the comments. I don't like it to be one-sided, so please do put comments down below. I like to uh, hear what you have to say. Thanks a lot.